kind of important game coming up this Sunday against them Chiefs. The Baltimore Ravens are hosting the AFC Championship for the very first time in franchise history. So this is a big one. And real quick, if you want to look the part for the game, if you want to help out on the road to Vegas for the Baltimore Ravens, go to Heart of the City Clothing and get your Road to Vegas hoodie. And when you go there, use code Engraven, and you get 20% off. 20% off, not just, the, but your whole order. Whatever you order, 20% off the whole order. So they really hooking you all up. Now, the Baltimore Ravens in this game, we want the players to hook up the offense. We want the players to hook up the defense. We want the players to hook up the special teams. But who are those key players that are needed extra in order to stop those Kansas City Chiefs? Well, I had a couple of people in mind, but it'd be much better if I got the expertise of one of my good friends to come help out. Team, keep it clean. Let's get it. Team Keep It Clean, very, very special guest in the building, personal friend of mine, my guy Jason from Huddle It Up Films. Make sure you check out all of his stuff down below in the description. I will have his YouTube and his Twitter down below so you can follow him on both. Jason, my guy, before we get into it, I appreciate you coming on. It's been a minute, but everything that we talked about last time has come to fruition, especially with how you spoke about Lamar Jackson as a passer and him being one of the best. Yeah. I mean, this this year has been great just to be a Ravens fan and see all their success. But yes, there's been some some personal vindication over here because, uh, you know, I read the comments and of course everybody's respectful in them, but not everybody uh, agreed with me when I said that you're looking at a top five thrower of the football. When you talk about off off platform arm angles, hitting every area of the field, and he was finally given a chance to do that and look at him now. He's about to win his second MVP in two different systems and mm. as the Ravens attack engraving, it's uh it can beat you in so many different ways. So we're getting the, the entire Lamar Jackson experience and it should just be getting started. And, and that's something that I'm so glad about too. We're getting the entire Lamar Jackson experience because in years previous, we've gotten a great experience, different years and whatnot, but it just felt like it wasn't the full thing. It didn't feel like it was as good as it was supposed to be and as good as it should have been. And we felt like there was a lot more potential there. And it's been nice to see this year with Todd Munkin that he's really been bringing the best out of Lamar Jackson. And that really leads up to what we're going to talk about today. Whether it's Lamar Jackson, whether it's some other people too, both on offense and defense, who are the Ravens' biggest X factors? Who are their most important players when it comes to stopping these Kansas City Chiefs? So we'll start off with uh we'll start off with defense. Who do you think are some of the Ravens' biggest X factors on defense when it comes to stopping Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kels, right? All them from the Chiefs. Who do you think? Well, you know, the the it's not a it's a pretty obvious answer to me. Mm -hmm. It is one of our best players, and that's Kyle Hamilton. There we go. Uh, I mean, when you look at you know the Chiefs, they still go through Travis Kelsey. When times mm -hmm. get tough, they're gonna go through Travis Kelsey. And what did the Ravens have? They have a top end, tight end eliminator in Kyle Hamilton. Now, I still expect them to play a lot of zone defense because that's what they do. And you want to keep eyes on Mahomes. You know, Mahomes is not Lamar Jackson when it comes to running the ball, but he has a knack of picking up first downs mm -hmm. and being able to break your back with that. So right. it's not like everybody's going to be man to man all the time and Hamilton's following Kelsey. But man, it's such an advantage for the Ravens to have somebody instead of like the linebackers or we saw Chuck Clark in the past or anything we tried on Kelsey just would not work. Now we have this uh, unicorn of a player who can do it all. <laughs> and Kyle Hamilton, I have, I have a thing. I have a feeling that he's going to see a lot of Travis Kelsey. Oh yeah. The other way sure. around. Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. And um, another thing with him too, you know, chiefs, they love the whole misdirection uh, before the play. They love uh, throwing passes at, or even behind the line of scrimmage, screen passes and whatnot, and picking up a bunch of yak. But that's something that's that's Kyle Hamilton's specialty right there. Uh, I, I remember um, watching the the Steelers game, um, the last game of the season, uh, and thinking like, man, and even uh, the the Dolphins game too, where they would be throwing screen passes and stuff and picking up yards. And I'm like, oh man, we're missing Kyle Hamilton bad right now because. 
he puts it into all of that. Like if Kyle Hamilton is in the area and you throw a screen his way, he he, he shuts that down quick. And, and that's it's a big part of Chiefs game. It's so funny that you mentioned this because both of us were on with Sarah and Bobby when they did their marathon. Mm -hmm. And when I was on, I did a little Kyle Hamilton film study. And it right. wasn't just the, the screens because they were all over the place, like you were saying. You throw a little screen pass, Kyle just covers ground so fast. Yeah. Uh -huh. But also in that Dolphins game, those outside runs that they were getting us with mm -hmm. early in the game. Kyle's there, you know, in the slot to shut those things down too. So he just has a knack. Anything around the line of scrimmage. And we saw the the uh, Texans run that trick, one of their trick plays last week, mm -hmm. where it was fake over here, fake over there, and we're gonna hit you in the middle. And Kyle almost had an interception. So actually on the channel, I have the I, I uh, have that film study on Kyle Hamilton from a week ago. But you can see exactly what you're talking about, man. Anything near the line of scrimmage, Kyle's just going to blow up his blocker or go around that blocker. And he's going to make first contact in a way that's that's very rare. Yeah, the the, the man is special, man. I remember um, when the Baltimore Ravens first drafted him, of course, there was a lot of discourse about Kyle Hamilton. Should they have taken him? Should they not have? Uh, and then even when he first started out, things were a little bit shaky. But as the season went along, his rookie season, he just got better and better and better. And something that I talked about a lot on here is that last year they just used him as a straight up weapon, as a weapon. He wasn't just a safety. He was like he was an outside linebacker. He was a pass rusher. He, he was a, a slot cornerback. He was a, he did so many different things last year. But my concern going into this year, I was worried because I'm like, all right, they traded Chuck Clark. So. I think they may put Kyle Hamilton in more of a traditional safety type role and they may take him away from what he did so well last year and just being a straight up weapon. But shout out to Mike McDonald. This is another reason why I, I really don't want the Baltimore Ravens to lose him. Um, he has continued the great development of Kyle Hamilton by not trying to fix what's not broken. While he has played some more traditional safety, he has continued to do all those other things oh. as well and done him at a high level too. So it, it, it's just, it, it's been a beautiful thing watching Kyle Hamilton continue to grow and literally in his second year, get all pro all honest. Pro. <laughs> Man. And you know what? It, it brings me to like next year and the future years. I think the Ravens would do themselves a service to make sure they have depth at strong safety and in the slot corner. So when you play these games against the chiefs or maybe next week, you have a different setup a different or two weeks in the street, you have a different setup. Maybe their, their slot receiver is different and their tight ends different where you can move Kyle Hamilton to wherever you need to do to take mm -hmm. away their main weapon because he's that kind of player. Right. He is super special. Now flipping it to the offensive side of the ball. Um, because with stopping the chiefs, it's not just about defense. Of course, that's a big part, but you got to put up some points as well. Uh, and we know we could obviously say, Oh, who's Raven's biggest X factor. We're going against the chiefs. It's Lamar Jackson on offense. Okay, cool. We get that. But who besides Lamar Jackson on offense do you think really has to have a great game in order for the Ravens to excel? Well, I think that really the beauty of this offense is that it's a balanced attack and it can be any anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not reliant on having a, say, a number one receiver like, mm -hmm. like the Bills do. And then everybody else is kind of like, oh, well, we really don't have to worry about that. Like – our approach at wide receivers is much like it is in pass rush where we don't have a, a miles Garrett and then a bunch of no names. We have a bunch of guys that can, that can hurt mm -hmm. you. Same like thing it. on offense, Odell Bateman, they can all make big catches. Zay flowers, mm -hmm. likely Andrew. So I'm going to go with a, a running back on this, the chief's weakness. If they have one on defense, it's a very good defense is their run defense. They were actually uh, much like the Ravens middle of the pack when it came to rush defense, yards per carry allowed, and up there uh, in pass defense. So they have a very good secondary, as you know, but they're vulnerable against the run. So I'm looking at a guy called Justice, named Justice Hill for this game. Uh, Dalvin Cook, who knows, maybe he falls into that category as well. But we've seen engraving. Gus has his role as the hammer, as your straight-ahead power runner, uh, you know, the pulls and the just smashing people in the mouth for five to eight yards. That's Gus Edwards. But some of these outside runs, and the Chiefs are inexperienced on the edge with George Karloftis, I think only in the second year. They don't have like that stud edge rusher that you see other teams, especially in the north, that we go against. So these zone runs, these outside runs, I expect Lamar's legs, that would be another X factor. Uh, I feel like we've been hiding that or saving that for big games all season. 
keep mm-hmm. them healthy. But when it's time to gash somebody and Lamar knows, we want to add that third, fourth dimension to our game. So I would say Justice Hill, keep an eye out for him out in the backfield, testing these Chiefs linebackers and really stretching the defense and using his speed. Wouldn't surprise me to see Justice have like a 50-yard game, which is, you know, a much much above his, what he averages. Yeah, yeah, that's true because he had – what did they say he had, 80 yards in the game? 80 or 88 yards. I forgot what it was in the game last week. And um, I did not know that that was a career high for him. I had really always thought that he had definitely would have got that before, especially being on these uh, crazy rushing teams for the Baltimore Ravens. But – I, then I thought about it. I was like, oh, well, he was behind the J.K. Dobbins or Gus Edwards or Mark Ingram, whoever it might have been. He was behind people. Um, so he didn't really get that many opportunities like that. And um, with Justice Hill, I remember when the Baltimore Ravens, they first re-signed him this offseason to a two-year deal. A lot of people were freaking out. A lot of people didn't like it at all. They were like, oh, what are we doing? Da, da, da. And I was thinking, okay, well, this is quality depth, but and it's more so special teams too because Justice Hill's really good on special teams. But little did we know um, just how the season would play out, injuries to J.K. Dobbins, bringing in Kenyon Drake, then letting go Kenyon Drake, trying out Melvin Gordon a little bit here and there, um, the unfortunate injury to Keaton Mitchell. Um, who knew that Justice Hill's role on this team – uh, would be so consistent and so impactful. And it, it's funny because it he looks as fast as he did the first year, like as a rookie back in 2019. And I think, you know, we haven't used him. Uh, you know, he's he hasn't come close to 20 carries, even when he had the whole game to himself against Pittsburgh a couple of years ago. So he's fresh, and I think that the mental part of the game has gotten better for Justice, like a, any mm-hmm. other player. You know, the more you see it, the more you execute runs. Right the better your vision is. So he fits a lot of what Todd Munkin wants to do. And there are certain runs that Gus is the man on straight ahead plow. And there's other runs where justice Hill is the better option on that outside stretching the edge and give you some explosiveness. And he's made some big plays uh, out of the backfield in the passing game too. Mm Mm-hmm. That's true. That's true. And it's nice to see that um, justice Hill, just his, his game has expanded so much. And like you talked about um, him getting that experience, uh, it's made a big difference in everything. And something else that you mentioned, too, that um, I really appreciate about the Baltimore Ravens this year is they have so many different ways to get it. Uh, like you talked about, it's not just a certain number one receiver. If you go by yards, and I'm sure the number one receiver, if you go by yards and targets, it'll be Zay Flowers. But at the same time, if you watch the games, like it's, it's different because it's, it's so many different ways that the Ravens can attack you. And now with the possibility, um, nothing official yet as of this recording, but with the possibility – uh, an expectation, I would say, of them adding Mark Andrews to the mix this week. Um, that's just a, yet another weapon uh, that you got to worry about. So Baltimore Ravens really set themselves up uh, nice this year. They have a lot of nice quality depth. Depth has been the name of the game this year because they suffered a lot of injuries, but they've been able to get through it. So um, looking forward to seeing how this Chiefs game goes. Uh, this is huge. As we know, this is historic. First time the Baltimore Ravens are hosting an AFC championship game at the crib. It's going to be crazy there. Uh, so shout out to anybody that's going. I, I just know the vibes up there in Baltimore and just all the surrounding cities are crazy right now because everybody's like, hey, this this is real deal. And it couldn't have been a better, more formidable opponent with it being the Chiefs. Uh, before we get out of here, how are you feeling about this game? I feel good. Look, man, I, I feel like uh... – you know, I stopped worrying about the matchup somewhere after the Miami game. And, you know, you knew, know me personally, you know, I'm honored to be a friend of yours. And, you know, I dig into the matchups and I'm trying to find strengths and weaknesses. And, man, we can't let this happen to us. And we've really got to attack this and that. And I'm looking at this for the first time in my Ravens fan. I'm original fan, you know, from Baltimore. I got a little age on me. I, I really don't care what the other team does. I really don't care what they have in 2023. The Ravens have the better roster. And, um, you know, just look at our our defend defenders in the back end when you talk about Hamilton and Geno Stone, Marcus Williams, the way Brandon Stevens and Darby has played. Even if Marlowe's not back, Millette makes plays. It's like we're going to – the Chiefs are going to have a hard time getting open on us. Mm. Uh, the Chiefs are going to have a hard time running the ball on us. The Chiefs are going to have a hard time stopping the run. The Chiefs are going to have a hard time dealing with Lamar Jackson, who is going to make his plays. So it's just like after we beat San Francisco like that and beat Miami like that, this is a strange feeling as a Ravens fan being the big dog. So 
I just feel like if we do what what we need to do in Graven, man, this is our game to win or to lose. You know what I mean? I'm just hoping that the guys come through. And, um, you know, on a bigger or larger big picture note, you know, I, I feel like you kind of always felt like it was going to come down to Kansas City. We were going to have to go through them one way or the other. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that this could be like this for the next how, however many years. You know what I mean? We're probably going to have to go through – either Allen or Burrow, and then eventually go through Mahomes to get where we want. So right. legacy game, man, legacy game for Lamar. <laughs> I'm trying to take it one day at a time, one game at a time. Ooh. But just think about this. Now, Mahomes has two MVPs and two Super Bowls, if I'm mm-hmm. not mistaken. All right. So let's fast forward to if things go well, what we're talking about this time next year, year from now. Hey, we're going to see. Because right man. now – Right now, it's been Mahomes and everybody else. You know, mm-hmm. who's the best quarterback in the NFL? Patrick Mahomes. No argument. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Hey, it's our Raven. It's the Ravens' time in Graven, and this city can feel it. It's purple everywhere. I had a male lady. I went out and talked to her, and she's talking to me about Raven, asking me about the Ravens. I'm like, this oh, is it. this is wild, man. This is wild. I know she she never asked me about before. She knows I'm into the Ravens, so mm-hmm. uh, it's that kind of time here in Baltimore, man. It's going to be a beautiful Sunday. So, th- want to thank you too for having me on and, oh, and talking man, some nothing. ball on, on the camera, on the camera. Oh yeah, for sure, man. Because we we talk all the time. We, we this this is just like a normal conversation for us, man. So I, I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate you coming through. I appreciate you setting up the time and and, and us making it happen. Finally, it's, it's been. A long time. It's been too long. Should have been done this a long time ago, but glad we were able to make it happen now. Yeah, if you w- if you want to see Engraven and my me do a podcast, comment down below and tell this man, you know, we need a weekly show about fatherhood and all that other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> they don't, they don't want to hear from me no more. They, they hear no, from me no. enough already all day, every day, man. But um, no, no. appreciate your team. Keep it clean. Make sure you check him out on his YouTube channel. The links to that and his Twitter are all down below in the description. Go show him that love like I know y'all will. We out.